this will be the second class on industrial relation in this class we will be dealing with approaches to study the industrial relations what are the approaches there are mainly five important approaches and believe me from this five itself you will get three to four questions directly in previous year epf examinations there were two questions directly asked and this lecturer will help you to crack those questions so please do watch the video till the end now we can begin the first approach that is approaches to study the industrial relations the scenario of industrial relation is pursued differently by different people that means each and every person approach to industrial relation is very different right for some industrial relations are related to class conflict others pursue it in terms of mutual cooperation and still others understand it in terms of competing interest of various groups that means the thinking of each and every person is different and depending upon that the approach of these persons to industrial relations varies but there are few experts and few thinkers who have proposed some of the approach to this industrial relations and today we will be discussing the five most important approaches one is unitary approach second is pluralistic approach third is marxism approach fourth is gandhian approach and fifth is structural approach okay and these are the five most important from which the questions will be asked in exams we will start with the unitary approach the, see i will try to teach you it in very simple format so that it can be easy for you to understand the unitary approach is based on the strong argument that there is only one source of authority that is the management that means this unitary approach always thinks of only management and not employees right it will only think of management whereas employees are neglected and it will not consider the negotiations and bargaining that means it says that if at all there is any issue there will be no against no negotiation or no bargaining under unitary approach industrial relations are grounded in mutual cooperation individual treatment that means only management is treated well team work and shared goals workplace conflict is seen as temporary arbitration in this that means whatever there will be conflict between management and employee is seen just as a temporary the conflict is temporary but it is not considered as permanent and the approach to deal this is very less and it says that unitary approach says that if at all there is any arbitration or if there is any conflict then it is due to poor management because it only considers the management as responsible for each and everything right therefore if there is any conflict then it is due to poor management and in order to inc develop that it says that develop the management the underlying assumption is that everyone benefits when the focus is on common interest and promotion of harmony conflict in the form of strikes is not only regarded as necessary but destructive it says that strike by employees when there is a poor management will lead to destructive nature of organization but whereas if the management is well then there will be no strike and there will be no strike and not only regarded as necessary but destructive right advocates of the unitary approach emphasize on reactive industrial re relation strategy they seek direct negotiations with employees participation of government tribunals and unions is not sought or is seen as being necessary for achieving harmonious employee relations that means it says that whatever may be the issue it will be dealt by management and there is no requirement or intervention of tribunals union or government that means it says that union that is trade unions or the employee union is not at all required in an organization this is the unitary approach and this is the simplest way that you can understand in order to answer the questions next the second important approach is pluralistic approach what is pluralistic approach it says that it considers both management as well as employees that means both are taken into considerations it believes in collective bargaining 
okay that means whatever issue is there we can sort it on the table see the pluralistic approach totally departs from the unitary approach and assumes that the organization is composed of individuals who form distinct groups with their own set of aims objectives leadership styles and value proportions that means see it says that there are two sets one is employer that is boss that may be management and another is employee right another is employee and it says that the profit motive the profit motive is of management whereas for the employee his intention or his motive is to increase his wages right therefore it says that the their own set of aims objectives leadership styles and value proportions the organization is multi structured and there will be continued tension due to conflicts within and between the various sectional groups how see if management is intending to increase the profit they will intend to reduce the wages this will hurt the employee and he will go on strike therefore there will be conflict in between conflict in between the management and employee right the pluralistic approach pursues organization as coalitions of competing interests where the role of the management is to mediate amongst the different interest groups that means it considers the trade union or the employee union in order to mediate between the management and employees so that the conflict is reduced next trade unions as legitimate representatives of employees interest stability in industrial relation as the product of consciousness and compromises between management and unions unions thus balance the power between the management and employees that means pluralistic approach believe in union because it will balances the power between the management and employees the pluralistic approach therefore a strong union is not only desirable but necessary it says that the union is utmost necessary right whereas in unitary approach the union is not at all necessary similarly society's interest are protected by the state intervention through legislation and industrial tribunals which provide orderly process of regulation and resolution of conflict according to the pluralistic industrial conflict is inevitable what does it says see as there are two intention and there are two aims as well as goals right two aims as well as goals therefore the profit mode making motive profit making motive of management and increasing wages motive of worker will lead to conflict therefore it is not at all possible to avoid this that is inevitable it is not at all possible to avoid the conflict between management as well as employee therefore it needs to be contained within the social mechanism of collective bargaining consolidation and arbitration that means there should be a collective bargaining as per the approach of pluralistic and consolidation as well as arbitration next the third approach is marxist approach it was proposed by karl marx okay do mention in the comment section karl marx is also known as father of what he is also known as father of what do mention it in comment section also known as the radical perspective do remember marxist approach is also known as radical perspective this is important it can be asked in examinations it is also known as radical perspective the mass the marxist approach is based on the proposition that the economic activities of production manufacturing and distribution are majorly governed by the object of profit like the pluralistic regard conflict between employers and employees inevitable in marxist approach also it says that the conflict between the management and employees is not avoidable however pluralistic believes that the conflict is inevitable in all organizations marxists see it as an product of capitalist society see now we will try to understand it in simple terms marxists see it as a product of capitalistic society what is capitalistic society that means all big industries all big factories are under the control of person with 
complete income okay who is capitalistic adversarial relations in the workspace are simple one aspect of class conflict the marxist approach thus focuses on the type of society in which an organization functions right it focuses on the organization which functions in democratic or it functions in capitalistic approach or it functions in socialistic approach depending upon this the marxist approach gives different ways or in which the conflict are resolved karl marx held that human labor was the source of economic value the capitalistic place his works workers less than the value their labor has added to the goods usually only enough to maintain the worker at a subsistence level that means see as the organization is running in capitalistic and the motive of the management is to increase the profit so he will make the worker that is employee to work more but he will pay less right what amount he will pay he will pay only the amount which is enough for subsistence for the employee but not what exactly is the amount that should be paid for the employee of the total worth the worker's labor however this compensation is marxian theory accounts for only a mere portion equivalent to the worker's means of subsistence the remainder is surplus labor what does this means that means the employer what has paid to the employee okay what has paid to the employee is only sufficient for him for his subsistence but the extra work that the employee has done for the employer it is extra work is nothing but surplus labor okay it is surplus labor for the employer and the value of it produces is surplus value to make a profit marx argued the capitalistic ap- appropriates the surplus value thereby exploiting the labor therefore see as the employer will exploit the labor therefore there will be conflict between management as well as employee even this paragraph says that conflicts arises not only because of competing interest within the organization but because of the division within the society between those who own or manage the means of production and those who have only their labor to offer industrial conflict is thus seen as being synonymous with the political and social unrest see in this trade unions are seen both as labor reaction and exploitation by capital as well as weapon to bring about a revolutionary social change concerns with wage related disputes are secondary it means in this marxian approach it says that wage related concerns are secondary but what is primary it says the labor reaction to exploitation by capital as well as weapon to bring about a revolutionary social change is the major primary reason for the conflict okay it is the primary reason what is primary reason one is exploitation of labor and in reaction to this he will go for a revolutionary social change these are the two major reasons for conflict besides marxist regard state intervention via legislation and creation of industrial tribunals as supporting management's interest rather than ensuring a balance between the competing groups the view is in contrast to belief of the pluralistic who argue that state intervention is necessary to protect overall interest of the society if you want the pdf you can join the telegram channel the link will be provided in descriptions and hope you are understanding it if at all you are you are unable to understand please do rewatch the video because it seems at the first instance that is it is heavy to understand but believe me it is very easy and it can directly fetch you 3 to 4 marks next the fourth is gandhi an approach it is very easy to understand as you all know gandhi he is known as the father of nation right and in amdavad mill strike of 1918 he used this gandhian approach he says that mr mr his approach to labor problem was completely new and refreshingly human he held definite views regarding fixation and regulation of wages 
organization and functions of trade unions necessity and disability and desirability of collecting bargaining use and abuse of strikes labor in discipline and workers participation in management conditions of work and living and duties of works, workers see in simple terms i will try to understand you i'll try to make you understand see what is gandhi say gandhi says that whatever the god has given to you it may be management or employees the capital that the god has given to you is only to look after but it is not your own therefore you should only look after it until and unless someone occupies it right therefore you are neither the owner you are not the labor and you should not work for the greed of that you should only work for the need right see in the amdavad textile labor association a unique and successful experiment in gandhian trade unionism implemented many of his ideas in this amdavad mill strike of 1918 gandhi used satyagraha and hunter hunger strike for the first time during an industrial dispute between the owners and workers of cotton mill in amdavad do remember it was the first hunger strike of gandhi in india gandhi had immense faith in goodness of man and believed that many of the evils of the modern world have been brought about by wrong systems and not by wrong individuals that means the whole system may be wrong but the individual is neither wrong he insisted on recognizing each individual worker as human being he believed in non violent communism going so far as to say that if communism comes without any violence it would be welcome see and gandhi introduced a very best concept called trusteeship trusteeship what is he says see n- neither belongs to you everything is given by god and you are just a human being trusteeship is nothing but both management of employee and management right management is both of employee and employer but the ma- the decision that should be taken collectively bargaining is not at all allowed in gandhian gandhi ji laid down certain conditions for a successful strike what are the conditions it should be a non violence non strikers or back leggers should never be molested there should be no violence the cause of the strike must be just and there should be no strike without a grievance right according to him employers should not regard themselves as sole owners of the mills and factories of which they may be legal owners right as i discussed earlier management should not think that he is the only owner they should regard themselves only as trustees or co-owners he also appealed to the workers to behave as trustees not to regard the mill and machinery as belonging to the exploiting agents but to regard them as their own protect them and put to the best use of them he says that whatever you are working just think that it's your own and protect it and work as if it's your own and this is the concept of trusteeship in short the theory of trusteeship is based on the view that all forms of property and human accomplishment and gifts of nature and as such they belong not to any one individual but to society thus the trusteeship system is totally different from other contemporary labor relation systems if you want to read more you can read it from the handouts we will provide the handouts the link is provided in the descriptions okay you can join the telegram channel see we have provided this comparison of industrial relation approaches point of difference unitarist approach pluralist approach and marxist approach gandhian approach is very easy you can understand it you just need to remember the difference what are the differences and see there is another last approach called system approach by professor john t dun lock among the contributions the most outstanding has been that of harvard university his system treatment deserves special mention in views of its wider applicability his book industrial relation systems of 1958 was a pioneering volume in which he presented an analytical framework of industrial relations dunlop defines industrial relation system in the following way what is the definition according to dunlop an industrial relation system at any one time 
in its development is regarded as compromised of certain actors certain contexts and ideology which binds the industrial relation system together and a body of rules created to govern the actors at a workplace and working community see an industrial relation system at any one time in its development is regarded as comprised of certain actors certain contexts and ideology which binds the industrial relation system together and a body of rules created to govern the actors at the workplace and work community the simple meaning is that there is an organization and due to some work culture the management as well as the employees are bind together and they are working together for the development of the organization there are three set of independent variables one is actors another is context and ideology we will see one by one see what are one is as per him there are three, three concepts one is environmental forces another is participants in the system and what is the output who are the environmental forces one is market of budgetary restraints the second is technology that is involved third is distribution of power in the society the participants in the system is tri party system one is union second is management and third is government who are involved in union they are employee and who are management employers what is government it will provide legal obligations and this will result in rules of workspace see there are many approaches except this but these five are most important if you want to read all of those you can read it from the pdfs the handout will be handout will be provided in the telegram channel you can join the telegram channel the link will be provided in descriptions if you have liked the video please give a thumbs up and if you have any query please do comment in the section below thanks for watching the video stay tuned